today we are not going to be doing any butchery and we're not going to be doing any cookery but what we are going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the butcher's equipment now a lot of you out there you've uh, messaged me and asked me you know can you do a video on your equipment you know in sharpening knives and that's exactly what we're going to do today so as you can see then on my block I've got a lovely array of equipment your basic butchering equipment so starting at the top of the line then needs no introduction we've got the chopper or meat cleaver whatever you want to call it obviously for for uh, chopping through small bone I know it looks pretty hefty but you know you don't want to go through bone more than about an inch thick great for cutting your chops loin chops you know loin lamb chops loin pork chops spare rib chops and then we get on to our knives so this lovely array of knives then the brand that I favor is the trade standard over here it's Victronox as you can see these six are Victronox that's a different make I should talk about that in a bit but first of all I want to talk about these now these come in two styles of handle this ergonomic hygienic plastic or this wooden one now when I've said on some of my comments that these knives last a lifetime I really mean it these two wooden knives here believe it or not are 24 years old it's hard to believe looking at that, that that's 24 years old but I won that and that steak knife and also the steel in 1990 when I won the young butcher of the year competition you know looked after like I said they cannot be beaten and they're such good value for money you know you can get these on Amazon for next to nothing but the trick with these like any other knife is you've got to look after it wash it correctly dry it correctly and obviously I should show you how to maintain the edge and I should put an edge on an old one for you with the stone so what we got exactly then I got two 10 inch steak knives for cutting steaks obviously big steaks where you need that reach across the piece of meat and I've got this this is a new one I'm trying Victorinox kindly gave me this this is again a 10 inch butcher's knife for dicing and staking and then we get onto these two six inch stiff bladed boning knives and I've got this lovely five inch semi flexible boning knife as well so moving along obviously the steel or honing blade whatever you like to call it chain mail glove to stop you cutting yourself and this is another knife uh, brand now these are cheaper than Victorinox I bought one to try it out and to be quite honest with you I'm quite impressed and then I've got two saws I've got a 20 inch meat saw this is for cutting like if you were doing beef across the ribs you know where you need that reach and then your standard butcher's saw 17 and a half inches then I've got a scraper for scraping the block this is called a chantry knife sharpener uh, made especially for the meat trade I should show you how that works obviously this is an oil stone you can get a wet stone and then the string now a lot of you are looking at that and thinking oh my god that's a lot of kit to buy but to be honest you don't need all that equipment obviously it's my job it's my profession so I have you know different bits of kit to do different jobs but if you just wanted a basic butchery equipment just one 10 inch steak knife one 6 inch boning knife or the 5 inch semi flex one steel and one saw so what I'm going to do then I'm going to show you how to sharpen your knives on the steel but I'm also going to show you how to get an edge back on a dull knife so I'm just going to set this all up a minute and I shall show you a few tricks of the trade okay so a lot of you guys out there you do a bit of home butchery you know if you're new to it please invest in one of these they are a great bit of kit and they will save you a lot of pain and a lot of trips to the hospital I shall just give you a test if you're squeamish turn away now but you can imagine if you're cutting or slicing you know it's not going to touch you and I, look at that great you know worth the money you buy these things once you know pass them down to your kids if they get into it but as you can see if you're starting out get one of these it'll save you a lot of hassle now I don't need to tell you that a knife has to be really sharp I've just got this onion just go straight down the middle simple no pressure 
and obviously a sharp knife you use less energy and if you do cut yourself at least with a sharp knife you get a nice straight cut which is easier to repair but if you get cut with a knife that's blunt it becomes jagged becomes difficult so with a knife sharp knife then no pressure goes through nice this blue one it's one of my old ones as you can see it's not cutting straight so I have to put some real pressure on see it's all jagged so what we need to do then is we need to put a new edge on that so we'll just do the test with the paper obviously paper is the hardest thing to cut with my sharp knife straight through and with the blue one nothing won't even start so first of all then we need to put an edge on what we're actually doing when we sharpen a knife put a new edge on as you can imagine a sharp knife when you look down there it's got that V where it cuts through the meat but what happens over time it dulls and it goes rounded so obviously we've got to get rid of all that excess metal to put it back to that lovely sharp edge again so a good tip then when you're using one of these stones get a damp rag put it down and that will stop any movement so like I said then this is an oil stone and obviously it's for doing food grade knives so I just use a bit of plain vegetable oil and the trick is is finding the angle so you find your 90 you half it to 45 and you take it down again to 22 to 25 and all you do put a little bit of pressure on when you go forward and relax when you come back you can actually hear that working forward relax and you work on that one piece and then you move it over same again so on that forward stroke you've got pressure and on the back stroke nothing and you move it again and you know this doesn't happen straight away it all depends how dull your knife is but you know a good five minutes each side and before you know it you've got your edge back on your knife like I said a sharp knife it's a safe knife put that oil on so you move your way along the blade pressure forward and you get to the tip keeping that angle just give that a quick wipe so 90 45 20 again pressure forward relax back and work your way along and when you get used to it you know you can start speeding up I'm just speeding up for the camera now just to show you you know just take your time and another method the Western method same angle again you can do it that way just nice full strokes all the way along the length of the blade and then wipe it off give it a steel check to see if it's any sharper and then all you're doing is building the edge up so put it back on and repeat and you'll see in about 10 minutes if you was to do that your knife as you'll see in a moment will be as good as new so the trick is then is that angle I shall show you from the other way in a moment so just go up 90 half it 45 and down you get 22 25 and forward pressure back relax and you can actually buy off Amazon sell them a guard that goes on here which has got the actual angle built in but I find you know if you want to just put your finger under just to start it gives you a, you know you're holding up that angle and as time goes on you can maintain that angle with more practice so 90 degrees 
45, 20, just gently push. Now these stones have normally got two sides to them, a coarse one, so obviously you use the coarse one to start the majority of the work to really get that blade skimmed off. And then you flip it over and just hone it gently on the finer side and then that's when we use the steel to finish the knife. Right, so I'm just going to give this a little steel. I shall show you how to steel in a moment. But I just want to show you after five minutes what a difference it makes. Remember how blunt that was? It's already cut in nicely. And what you do is you put it on the wet stone, sharpen it, you know, and then you slowly build up the edge. So sharpen it, steel it, check it, build it up a little bit more and you get it real sharp. Let's just check it on the paper. Obviously before it wouldn't cut paper. Now, We're getting somewhere there so before we get to the basics of using the steel i just want to show you this clever clever bit of kit if you look in there there's two steels already placed like i said this is called the chantry knife sharpener invented solely for the meat trade so if you couldn't get the hang of a steel you'd sharpen it on your whetstone put your knife in you might be able to see those two steels Give it a good 10 pulls through. Not too much pressure, does it all for you. Now I know that's a lot sharper than when we started. There's your blade. I mean, be careful if you try this, but you can physically feel it's razor sharp. Now I don't recommend you do this bit, but I know it's not very hygienic, but shaves the hair off your arm. I'll give that a wipe. We'll try it on the old paper test. Obviously like I said didn't cut paper to start with. Now that's nice and sharp and that's how you put a new edge on your dual knife. It's a beautiful thing. So on the other end then it's a lot better. So this is how you would sharpen all your knives. Same principle from the big steak knife obviously to the small five inch and obviously like I said you just keep building it up in the end you end up with a resurrected knife like that so the next thing I want to show you then is how to use the steel obviously there's two ways that way or the table way and what I'm going to show you get around here same principle 90 degree, 45 degree, half again to about 20 to 25 and then just from the heel to the tip, one nice long stroke, not too much pressure and all you're doing is removing any burrs and just sharpening up that blade that we've just re-edged and you know you see chefs giving it all that it's all rubbish you only need in real terms three or four each side and that will do the trick every time you know you're only just honing it you see chefs give it all that Gordon Ramsay does absolutely nothing for the knife blade that's how to use your steel so for the handheld version then, find your 90, find your 45, find your 20, heel to tip, nice long strokes, reminds me of a joke, naked man walks past two nuns, one has a stroke, the other couldn't reach. And if you don't feel safe with it going towards you, obviously, gently away. That knife has been fully resurrected. 
from what it was to what it is now it's two different animals so like I said then that knife is brought back up to shop standard and obviously you can see how easy that goes through that onion now from what it was before and that'll be good for about two months now if you just regularly steal that and then when it goes blunt again get out your whetstone or your oil stone which one you prefer obviously oil stone you use oil whetstone you submerge it in water for 15 minutes but it's exactly the same principle so there's your stiff rigid blade boning knife and this is your semi flex I should show you what that means it's great for going round bones obviously that will give you maximum cutting but there's no freedom of movement that will bend up and around bones so that's why we use a semi flex and I find that I'm using those more now than the rigids but you know whichever one you choose they're both great bits of kit and especially if you can get Victorinox but like I said this easel a good little brand it's only a couple of pound cheaper you know but I think it's a great value knife well I hope you enjoyed that video then on the butcher's equipment and how to sharpen and look after your knives and I've just found my original certificate look when I was young butcher of the year 24 years ago told you I was good see you again sometime